Hey guys, this is Callum from English Shooting and welcome back to the channel. We're going to be looking in to Yukara, what it is and all of the different elements from the VCR AAC 2006 to realistic imitation firearms and imitation firearms. But first off, what is Yukara? Well, it stands for the United Kingdom Airsoft Retailers Association, and it was formed after the VCRA Act, that's the Violent Crime Reduction Act 2006, to be a valid defense against the act for people to still own realistic imitation firearms. There's a lot of acronyms and different things there, so I'm going to try and break it all down. So, Yukara is effectively a membership. To gain membership, you need to be over the age of 18 and compete in at least three skirmishes within a two-month period. And once you've got your Yukara number, you can then go to an airsoft shop and buy any realistic imitation firearm. And there are two phrases here in terms of the guns. You have imitation firearms and realistic imitation firearms. An imitation firearm is something that imitates the function of a gun. This can be something as silly as a Nerf gun. A Nerf gun is considered an imitation firearm. This is why you also have two-tone guns or brightly colored guns because again they're imitating a firearm but not looking like one they're not realistic so realistic imitation firearms are something that could be mistaken as a real gun and within the vcra act the government the home office were concerned that if people were able to freely get hold of realistic imitation firearms that they would be used in crime so that criminals could you know, scare people into thinking that they had a real gun. This could be used for muggings, could be used for robberies, so on and so forth. So they wanted to bring in further restrictions to make it harder to obtain, and this was all within the VCRA Act. But within the Act, there are certain exemptions or certain valid defences which allows you to sell and own and manufacture realistic imitation firearms. One of the biggest one is of course for reenacting military scenarios or skirmishing. So the popular sport of skirmishing, going out there in all of the, the camo and your military gear with BB guns and recreating some sort of military scenario. Well, most of those, if not all of them, will be members of Yukara. They would have completed those three skirmishes and would be able to go out and buy a realistic imitation firearm. Of course, if you're trying to reenact a military scenario within the bushes or within the jungle, whatever, and you've got a brightly pink or green colored gun, you're going to stick out. So to be able to do that realistically, you're going to need a gun that's in fitting in terms of color and also be realistic. There are other defenses as well in terms of museums or theatrical performances, but the main one that you're going to be interested in in terms of going out there and actually shooting and enjoying the guns are going to be these military scenarios or reenactments. Funnily enough, and a bit of a backstory in terms of my experience with Yukara, it's because of Yukara and the requirement for a valid defense that I ended up getting into shooting. I went to go and buy a realistic imitation firearm, although at that time I just knew it as a BB gun, and I was told, well, you need a Yukara, or you need a valid defense to be able to buy it, otherwise we're gonna have to put it in two-tone. I thought, well, that's a bit silly, I just wanna plink some cans in my room, and it was actually the airsoft shop that said, well, if you don't want to go through for a Yukara and you don't want one that's at least 50% of vibrant color, then maybe you should look at an air pistol. Now, air pistols can bring further confusion into this, but I'll explain in a bit why they are different. So I thought, okay, well, if I can go and buy something today, I'll go and buy an air pistol. And I ended up going and buying one of the Umarex Beretta 92FS air pistols, which were in 177. And 
just being over the age of 18, I was able to go and buy one without any defense. The reason you're able to do that is because air pistols are actually firearms. They're just firearms that you don't require any certification to be able to own as long as the air pistol is under six foot pounds. If it's over that, then it becomes section five. So it is funny, or certainly I think it is, the fact that a BB gun that shoots a plastic pellet with far less energy you needed a Yukara you needed a valid defense but an air pistol I was able to just go and buy which is far more powerful and certainly would inflict far more damage and in my opinion are far more realistic they usually have the full weight of the real gun and because they are most usually metal constructions they, they feel and look a lot more realistic but anyway I was able to go and buy one and because they were a bit more powerful I certainly wouldn't be able to plink tin cans in my bedroom doing that so I ended up having to find a range and that's what led me down to getting my shotgun certificate and then firearm certificate. So a big thanks to the VCRA Act and the requirement for a valid defence, otherwise I probably wouldn't be sat here making this video today. One thing that I think a lot of people get misconstrued is that in terms of a valid defence for sport, the Yukara is the only defense. Now, there's going to be a lot of people that get upset with this or maybe disagree. However, the people that are in the know, that are closest to the lawmakers and to the industry, have come out and said that actually taking part in Action Air and IPSC discipline would be a valid defense. Because ultimately, if you are found in possession of a realistic imitation firearm and you get dragged to court in front of a judge, the judge is going to ask, well, why did you have it? And when you say, well, Action Air, which is an internationally recognized sporting discipline, he's going to know straight away that the reason you have it is not criminal and ultimately in the spirit of the law the VCRA Act was to stop criminal activity and the judge is going to instantly look and go well no this is for a lawful and legal sport something that's actually quite sensible and therefore gives a valid defense this person had no intention of using this gun criminally so there's going to be no further action but the UK PSA and other individuals are working very hard behind the scenes to get this written in law or to certainly have it absolutely clarified beyond all doubt by the police or home office that competing in, I, in IPSC or Action Air would be a valid defense but there are a number of airsoft shops which will accept this and you're most likely going to have to prove to them somehow that you take part in Action Air in the UK that's going to be having potentially a safety course a short gun safety course in Action Air being a UK PSA member or being able to demonstrate that you have competed in registered matches. So don't think that Yukara is the be all and end all of being able to get a realistic imitation firearm. There are other valid defenses and ultimately it comes down to the spirit of the law. If you're going to be in court it's going to be up to you to give a valid defense to that judge and it's got to be a defense that that judge is going to to take on board and and recognize and therefore not charge you or not give you any sentencing so really that's everything you're going to want to know in terms of getting your yukara being able to buy a riff or realistic imitation firearm sort of the do's and don'ts as well and certainly to to be able to tell you that yes action air can be used as a valid defense if you want to get into it and you have any concerns about buying the guns but there we go guys if you have any further questions then please drop them in the comment section below thank you very much for watching this video i really hope you've enjoyed it if you have please give it a big thumbs up and please make sure you're subscribed for any future videos and as always guys i hope to see you soon <laughs>